All right, guys, welcome back to Strategic Angling episode number 15. Uh, this is another exciting episode. Uh, we are looking to talk with you guys about buzz baits. Uh, I love throwing buzz baits. I think it's a great way to catch big bass, especially in weird times of the year. And uh, that's what we're going to tell you guys about is when we use a buzz bait, why, what, what equipment we use, and which buzz baits, some of which buzz baits we use. So I'm going to let JJ kind of Give us a rundown of you know what a buzzbait is, how it works, what you're trying to imitate with it, and then uh, maybe get into some specific ones we like or modifications we make or things we look for. So, all right, thanks, Brady. So, uh, buzzbait. Uh, last episode we talked about spinner baits. A buzzbait is kind of a spin-off of a spinner bait. Uh, it comes up, goes to the wire tie, and then the 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 blade is actually a buzzing blade that that bubbles water on the top of the water. It, you can see the the arm of it, instead of coming straight out like a spinnerbait, it comes up and then back, and that allows it to go along the top of the water. The buzzbait is turning the top of the water. The head and the skirt usually are slightly below the water. Um, it's a, a good way to cover water. It gets top water bites. Uh, the old saying was, you need a kicker, grab a clicker, which means the clicking blade of the buzzbait. Um, there's a lot of different brands. Um, you're going to want to pick one um, that um, has a good quality hook in it. You want that hook to have a little bit of separation between the blade and the hook so that when the fish eats it, the arm of the blade does not get in the way of the fish eating the or getting hooked onto the, onto the hook. Um, I use buzz baits mainly from just before pre-spawn, so you're looking at high 50 degree water temps all the way through the fall. Um, the, you know, they come in sizes ranging from probably one eighth of an ounce up to about a half. Um, uh, than that, yeah. yeah. Um, Some of the Ozark guys throw real big ones. But. The, uh, uh, the, the majority of what you're gonna use, if you get too heavy, you're gonna have to burn that thing, which sometimes is good. Um, the, Obviously, the heavier it is, usually the bigger the, the blade they'll put on it. Um, you'll have sometimes with a, with a uh, regular two blade like this, some of them have three blades. Some of them will have a uh, clicker blade that uh, goes on the uh, vertical arm and hit, the blade hits it. Other ones like this one, uh, the blade actually hits the head and makes that, that ticking sound when it, when it hits. Um, Colors wise, you're going to want, it's kind of the standard white, chartreuse, black. Uh, you can vary the blade color too. I don't know how much it matters. Um, th these are, uh, buzz baits are great around weeds. They're great around docks. Uh, the Ozark Lakes, the guys will throw them on, you know, just covering water down the bank and just burn the bank with a, with a buzz bait. Um, so they're a pretty versatile lure. Big fish like top waters and fish bass in general like to feed looking up. So uh, they're looking up and they're seeing this thing. I think sometimes it mimics a shad, sometimes a bluegill, maybe a baby duck or a snake or something crawling on the top of the water. But uh, I do know they like to eat it. Um, it's probably better on uh, overcast or rainy days, maybe with a slight breeze, you know, get a bluebird, uh, bluebird sky with no wind, it's probably not a time that you're going to grab a buzz bait. Um, but if you got a little bit of ripple on the water and a little bit of overcast uh, sky to kind of disguise it, because this really doesn't look like anything that's natural, so you're going to want a little bit of a, a little bit of weather around it to kind of disguise it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great overview. Um, uh, one thing I want to add is that they're great, uh, really good pre-fishing baits. Um, they, they're a good way to launch casts and cover a lot of water. And uh, if you, you know, like if you, if you won't even want to cut the hook off or just put something over it, you can burn these pretty quick and fish will miss them. And that's really all the, you know, the sign you sometimes need uh, in an area. So great pre-fish bait. Uh, I've always been very, very fond of buzz baits. I think I probably throw them too often uh, if that's possible. But I throw my buzz bait on, on the river on braid. Um, with like a medium heavy action rod before that I would throw it on like fluoro with a little heavier rod and I, I just prefer the braid a little bit more uh, especially because you know, I like to rip it out of veg vegetation sometime and then get the blades turning again which you don't get as well with the stretch with mono so uh, for a rod you know 
I don't know if there's an exact science to what makes a great buzzbait rod. Just usually a rod with a little bit of bend to it. Uh, in the Dobbins lineup, popular ones, you know, roughly four-ish power, three power, depending on what line you want to use. Um, somewhere between seven and seven six, maybe. I don't know. People go super long with buzzbait rods, but and then there's some people who fish, you know, a lot of top waters with like crankbait rods and braid, it's just to let the fish have it. I don't know if this is the bait I would let, you know, do something like that on, but. There, you know, there's no exact science to buzz baits. Um, that's one thing I would say is just, I mean, this is another try it, try a bunch of different ones, see what works for you thing, because you'll drive yourself crazy if you try to go buy every single kind of, of buzz bait. You know, they make silent ones, clackers, small little white ones. This one doesn't have a skirt on. I use these with horny toes. That's probably my favorite river presentation is an unskirted one with yeah. a big sw uh, a swim bait or uh, a horny toe from Zoom. Um, I, I find myself using these, and these are a half ounce one, a bigger option that I think gets bit by bigger fish. So, Yeah, I think, you know, you mentioned, so you, this one here has a skirt, this one doesn't. Uh, this skirt is, is rigged what I would call backwards, and the reason for that is if you flare it the way you normally put a skirt on, the, the skirt will be up here messing with the blade. So sometimes, especially on the smaller buzz baits, we'll just rig it so that it's kind of hanging back. Um, and like Brady said, uh, one of probably uh, maybe a better option and is you pull the skirt off and you put a, a horny tote on. There's also um, uh, smaller um, paddle tail swim baits you can put on it. Um, there's smaller horny toad type varieties um, that that sometimes you can put on there, or you can put like a uh, like a swimming craw or something like that on there. And anything like that will just help give it a little lift. The other thing that I've found is I fish these a lot in, in, in a lake with some docks, and if you put a horny toad on or a swim bait, it skips a lot better. You can actually skip a buzz bait. If you have the skirt on, it just doesn't smoothly skip very well, but if you put a horny toad on there, you can skip that thing under a dock and get it crawling out. Um, and that's that's obviously a good option, but you can trail it with whatever you want, really. Uh, Obviously, the more bulky trailer you put on, the slower you can reel this. And the old, you know, when I was growing up, they said just reel it slow enough to keep the blades turning. And, and um, but, but I don't think that's always the case. I think, like Brady said, sometimes, sometimes they want it burn, and you want a heavier one, and you want to burn it. It just makes a lot of disturbance, and bass don't like it, so they, they eat it. You bring up a great point for me. For me, in a situation where I think a bass is feeding up, feeding top water, I'll fish it slower. Um, keeping the strikes on longer, it's less of a reaction deal, more of a feed, uh, which these are great for that. And then the other school of thought is, is just make the fish react. And that's when you really move them fast and get them to show themselves or even hit it. Um, but this is another bait, at least for me, that um, you really want to make sure it's running the right way. Mm -hmm. um, we talked a little about this on the last episode of spinner baits that you know they can run a little funny well buzz baits are tenfold that in my opinion i'm always having to adjust the buzz bait to get it clacking right or the real weird thing you can do with these is depending on which way you bend this top arm you can get them moving left and right so if you use the buzz bait you'll notice they want to tend to, to run left a little bit as you bring them in um, there's a way to bend these, and I don't know exactly the way to do it, I just do it. Uh, so like if you're fishing a bank and you're going up the right side and you're casting from the right side and you want that buzz bait to not run away from laydowns and rather stay in the laydown area and the strike zone, you know, you maybe want to find one that's going to stay a little right or run a little straighter. Uh, and vice versa, if you've got targets that are, you know, on your left side, it's great, but Playing around with how your buzz baits run is good because a lot of times they get mangled by fish, especially if you're yeah. in a braid, and you gotta readjust and get them clacking again because if it is a clacking one, that clack sound is a big important thing you don't wanna miss out on because you're lazy or, you're not lazy or just didn't think about, you know, changing your way it's running. And the other thing is, is this is another one where people will run uh, trailer hooks on, especially on the skirted models yeah. because there's a lot of short strikes that occur with buzz baits. I don't run them as much on the, the non-skirted option because I feel like they're they're keying better. But on the ones with skirts, I sometimes will add a trailer hook. And one thing I know I need to do better this season is um, size down. I own all the little small ones, I just never use them. 
but I think small ones can be very effective too, especially in shallow, shallow water where I can't get away with my big, you know, half ounce loud ones. So that's a goal I've got this season is use smaller buzz baits a little more because uh, those have sat in packages since I bought them a year ago. So. And I think that goes along with, you know, what you're imitating. So early in the summer when the... Let's pause, let me shut that heat up. Sorry, I forgot I was wrong. And I think that kind of goes along, you know, the size of your buzz bait. Again, you're going to try to mimic the forage. So, in the early summer, um, when the when the baby bluegills and baby shad are out, you're going to maybe want a smaller one. Um, as the shad get bigger, or if you're imitating bluegill, you're going to want a bigger one. But again, you just got to experiment because uh, it seems like every day is different. And sometimes they'll want a big noisy one, and sometimes they just want that subtle gurgling. Um, one one old timers tip is if you're if you're reeling a buzz bait and it's leaving a bubble a bubble trail then you have the uh, proper barometric pressure for fishing a buzz bait is the old wives tale and I, I don't know if it's true or not but it certainly when I see that bubble trail I have a little more confidence in, in throwing it I don't know. yeah uh, one other thing to add with buzz bait for me is this is the only top this is my only top water that I will quote unquote get out of hand with throwing it's it's one you can use on a day that top water doesn't make sense you know i find myself pulling out a buzz bait when nothing else is working because when you burn them you sometimes can get those weird bonus reaction strikes that you might not have gotten on a tough day and don't be afraid to throw this when the water's colder than you think you should be throwing it um there's a lot of guys down south especially that you know say they'll throw them low 40s um when nothing else is working and they can get a reaction strike out of buzz bait. So uh, Matt down at KNK has a, a bunch of different options. I know Booyah makes a couple of good ones, and they make a nice one with a clacker. That's a decent option. I think RC Tackle uh, has, has some down at k, &K. Yeah. I don't know if you have any other ones you want to mention, but... And I think those are good ones. Um, strike King has buzz bait. Every, every, most companies have yeah. a buzz bait, and... Um, Honestly, you're just going to find, want to find out, do you want one that, that clicks the head? Do you want one that has a clacker? Do you want a double blade, single blade, how big a one? And then just pick one that looks good because honestly, you're, you're fishing a reaction bite most of the time. And, and so, you know, it, it, the, the small details probably aren't as important as you being confident in what you're throwing in. Mm -hmm. You got anything else to add on these? It's just a weird, it it's, looks weird when you throw it and you're like, man, why would a fish even eat that? At the, you know, because you don't see a lot of stuff swimming across the top of the water in a straight line gurgling, but uh, but they do like it. They really do. If you're a bank fisherman, uh, which it's been a couple of years for me since I was one, not that I couldn't fish in the bank, but I don't as much. Buzz baits, for me, when I was on the bank, were just a great way to catch get bonus fish. I mean, I, I would throw a buzzbait all the time. And like JJ said, you can use big trailers, you can use small trailers. Heck, I used to throw a little red worms on mine because I thought the red would key in, key in a little something. So play around with this is another confidence bait, um, but uh, definitely give these a try in the next month or two. So, yep, good luck guys. Thanks, we'll catch you next week.